Good morning, church. Good morning, Sahara Avery. Good morning. Sahara Aram. Good morning. We are literally uh, at home. I'm not sure how we're pulling this off, but uh, we do have a great crew. Your staff are, are hardworking people. And uh, thanks to uh, to the dedication that they have to, to spreading the gospel, that we can make this possible to broadcast this into your homes. Uh, we did make a decision to not have church this morning, even though the weather was, uh, it's uh, fair and it's actually really beautiful outside. Uh, but at the time when we make the decision uh, with the information we had, um, the decision to not meet together this morning, even though we would love to have you guys in person, obviously, but this will do for today. And I know some of you um, are alone at home. Uh, I hope you guys are well. Give yourself a, a big hug and, and a big high five. And we're all going to do high five. <laughs> high five. High five. <laughs> but I'm so glad you guys can join, join us for church this morning. Um, and you know, it, that during this time of, of, of uh, uncertainty or this pandemic or, or the storm, it really redefined church for us, hasn't it? Um, where church is no longer uh, just the building, but church has become us communicating, uh, meeting together when we can, and 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 uh, having a, a service together where our hearts are joined towards God. It's not about the building, it's not about the service, but it's about our hearts um, leaning towards God. So if you don't have uh, your communion this morning, go ahead and, and take that and bring it um, and leave it next to you because we are going to participate in communion Today, uh, we are going to uh, resume our services next week at 9 a.m. and 11.15. We have a lot, a lot, a lot going on. We're planning for Christmas already. Uh, how crazy it is that we're planning for Christmas already. So we have some big announcements for you next week. Really excited about that. Also, next Saturday, uh, there is a prayer meeting um, at the church at 9 a.m. Saturday prayer meeting at the church at 9 a.m., would love for you guys to join us. Uh, Gary Sorber is gonna, uh, not Sorber, Gary uh, Bowes uh, is going to lead the prayer service. So I hope you guys can join us. I see you guys are commenting on Facebook. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome. I know uh, some of you are. And if you want to send me a text just to say hello, I'm gonna try to re, uh, respond to some of these. Um, Simone says hello to you guys. Uh, Nancy says hello. Um, and, and Diane Forrest and Colette, welcome everyone to, to church to start um, today. Let me start by reading a passage of scripture for you. So today's a little different. I'm not standing up and preaching and teaching or anything like that. We're going to have a, a, a time of community together, okay? And hopefully my kids will be patient enough to, to stay around for long. Here's the deal. So Genesis uh, chapter one, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and take it out. Genesis chapter one, we're going to walk through Genesis all the way to Revelation. You're thinking, how's that going to be possible? It's very possible. We're going to do that today. So Genesis chapter one, it says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over, over the waters. So right away, you hear and see that God is in control of all things. Amen. God is in control of the weather. God is in control of our lives. God is in control of all his creation. You can take comfort in that. Uh, Susan and, and and John and Laura and Mauricio, it's all saying hello from home. This is awesome. I kind of enjoy this right now. The vitro, welcome. Marcy, welcome. So we're still in, in, in the welcoming stages here. So at the beginning, you see God create, and he's in control of his creation. And fast forward to Matthew chapter, two, um, chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Turn your Bibles there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John four gospels. Matthew is the first one. Matthew chapter eight, verse 27, it says this. So there's a storm and then Jesus was sleeping and the disciples were scared. So they called Jesus. How can you be sleeping through this? And Jesus, how are you such little faith? And he got up and he calmed the storm. In verse 27, this is what it says. Um, oh, we're butting heads over here. 
Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And Jesus replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. So throughout our service today, our time together, good morning, Jimmy, all the way in the West Coast. Um, our time together today, I want us to understand and take comfort in God and take comfort in, in the creation, take comfort of, of that he is in control of his creation. And that includes us. So I'm going to pause right there. Lewis going to kick us in with some worship and I'll be right back uh, with some more. Okay, you guys. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Avery and Aaron was singing along. Hallelujah. All creatures of our God and King. So God is in control of his creation and God is in control of our lives. But there's always doubt, isn't it? That we always wonder, does God really uh, live with us? Is he really in control? And the wisest man in the world, the wisest man that ever lived has the same question. Solomon built this magnificent temple for God that he literally believed that God was going to live with his people and his kingdom. He was the wisest man. And after, he, after seven years of building, he finished the temple and he stood in front of the temple and he was dedicating it in front of all the people in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 18. He says this, but will God really live, dwell on earth with humans? He has the same questions as we do. But God, but will God really dwell on earth with humans? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this 
temple I have built. Yet the Lord my God give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Hear me, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence. May your eyes be open towards this temple day and night, this place of which you said you would put your name there. May you hear the prayer your servant praying towards this place. So Solomon is, is praying to God. He is yearning for God. He is pleading with God. He says, keep your eyes on this temple. And at the time, he was referring to Solomon's temple where he built for God. But unbehold, without him even knowing, he was actually referring to himself. He's saying, God, be attentive to this temple, to who I am. And Paul said just that in Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says this, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? So here's the big, the, the big picture, right? Solomon is praying to God and he's, and he's talking to God and say, pay attention to my temple. But without even knowing, he's talking about himself as, as he is the holy temple. And in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Paul says, we are the holy temple. Where Solomon was praying was a physical temple at a distant, but in the New Testament, when Paul is referring to is us, that we are the holy temples, and God is paying attention. He is attentive. He is listening. He is with us in good, in bad, in happy, in sadness, in loneliness, in togetherness, that he is with us in this holy temple, that he lives in all of us. If you are a baptized believer, if you're a Christian who loves Jesus, who follows Jesus, who believe in the message of the scripture, who believes that the son is the savior of the world, you are a holy temple where God dwells. So in the Old Testament Chronicles, Solomon is like, God, do you really live with his people? And in the New Testament, in Corinthians, Paul says, he actually does. He lives with us inside of all of us. And that, it's amazing grace. Let's kick it back to, uh, to, to Lewis uh, to, to sing Amazing Grace for us.
God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. That's uh, that's not a good thing. Don't put, don't put your nose on on live church. <laughs> but that is home church. I tell you, it is home church. So this idea of the grace of God, right? He created the uh, the, the the world. He created us, and He's in control of our lives, and He's in control of the weather. That is the grace of God, as it played out in Jesus. And then Solomon asked the question, God, do you really live with us? And in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Paul says, yes, he, he, he really does. He, he lives in us, actually, not just with us. He lives in us by way of the Holy Spirit that guide us, lead us, comfort us, right? And then the grace of, of God. And, and what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, as we continue to read through the scripture here, uh, as I'm reading this and explaining this, you guys go ahead and and type in your prayer request. We got a couple uh, that we're going to pray for right after I, I finish reading this. And then uh, Lewis would jump back in with some songs after my prayer. But, uh, but type in your prayer request, whatever you might have. But Paul is, was a missionary, and and he, he's been shipwrecked, he's been beaten, he's been rejected, which for us, understands this, when you follow this Jesus, when you follow this Jesus who telling us to live in a completely, in the opposite direction of what the world is telling us, people will have concerns and questions and even hate you for it because they don't understand it. And sometimes it might be frustrating and, and sometimes you're, you're saying like, God, why is this happening to me? I'm doing your work or I believe in you and I'm speaking up about uh, the, the, the Messiah, he's, the, your son, Jesus. And why do people not love me for this? So Paul has the same struggles, the same struggle we have. And he says this in, uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, right? What we'll, we'll get verse uh, 7, it says, for because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. So we don't know what that thorn in my flesh is, a messenger of Satan, so that Satan is at work 
in this war as well. So, so bad things do happen and bad thing happens to a lot of good people as well. It, do, it doesn't, it, being a Christian, it doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to us, but being a Christian, when bad things do happen, listen to what Paul says, to torment me three times, I plead with the Lord to take away from me. So God never took away the pain and suffering of Paul's life or of this life. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power it's made perfect in weakness wow my grace it's made sufficient for you for my power my power it's made perfect in weakness that means that through this life right through the grace of god that he's control of creation he's in control of our lives he lives in us so that when bad things do happen we turn to his grace that is sufficient his power carry us through these rough times the problem is when we have problems or the problem is when we we hit a storm or a pandemic whatever it is we turn to everything else instead of turning towards the grace of god sometimes we need to be reminded how powerful the grace of god is that his grace is sufficient for us and his power it's made perfect in our weakness and this morning there's some weaknesses going on in our church family and in our community as well. And I, I've written down a couple of prayers that we need to, to focus and pray for. In the next few moments, I want all of us on Facebook, on online, or, or watching, I want us to focus on prayer. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can send me a text as well. You know my phone number. If you're watching us Facebook, go ahead and type it in. This is something I want to pray for today. One, pray that the gospel continues to preach. So as Lewis, go ahead and, and, and play some, some background uh, strumming there, Lewis. Um, let's, let's pray for the gospel to continue to preach and teach because it is the grace of God that carries all of us through this. It's sufficient. Father, I pray and ask that you help us preach the gospel. It is the grace of the gospel that carries all of us through good times and through bad times, through broken marriages and healing relationships, through making enemies friends, through making us in good standing with you. It is your grace, oh God. Help us to continue to preach and teach the gospel that people will know your grace because your grace is sufficient and your power is made strong in our weakness. It is in the name of Jesus. The second thing I want us to, to pray about, uh, I'm not sure you can hear me uh, through Lewis playing a guitar, uh, I hope I hope you can. Uh, good morning, Eves, uh, uh, all the way from North Carolina. I, I want to give a shout out to our Delaware friends as well, uh, Scott Evans and Al and Carol and Scott and Carol as well. Um, I know you guys are watching. Uh, the thing, is, the next thing I want us to pray about is this. Uh, go ahead and ease that up a little bit, Lewis. I'm not sure if they, uh, they can hear me. Uh, let, let's pray for 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 Katie Johnston. Uh, I know Dan uh, is. Um, uh, I can't imagine being a, a husband and, and knowing your wife is in pain uh, in in the hospital and he can't be there. Um, she has some 
some pain after the surgery. So she is back in the hospital today and the doctor is going to go see her today. So pray for God's grace to be on her today, church. Just pray for God's grace to be on, 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 on her and on, on, on Dan as well as, as he's navigating through this. Okay, uh, so let's pray for Katie Johnston, um, who's having some, some, some complication of pain after her back surgery. Father, we lift up Katie today. Uh, we ask that you heal her, God that you ease the pain, but I ask that your grace will cover Dan as I can't imagine being a husband and, and your wife is in the hospital and you can't go in uh, to comfort her, God. I pray that you comfort them both. May your strength, your power cover them in their weakness because your grace is sufficient for us. In the name of Jesus that I pray, Amen. Amen. We also want to, to pray for, for Henry Schrader, who um, had uh, an accident with, with the scooter and had a minor concussion and broken fingers and, and his a uh, little bit of uh, uh, damage to, to the face, to the knees, the skin and whatnot. And, and I'm, I'm sure it's a, it's a painful recovery process. So we're also going to pray for, for uh, Steve Wells, uh, Scott Wells' um, dad, who had con um, surgery yesterday in a collarbone, but mom had a seizure yesterday. Um, so I, I, let's, let's lift the Wells up in our prayers and let's lift up the Schrader in our, fan, uh, in, in our prayer this morning as well, uh, that the grace is sufficient. Uh, church. So as we're having this house church, man, I, I, this is a wonderful time together where we're just praying for our church people. It's not about service. It's not about song. It's not about attending, but it's about our hearts leaning to God and pray and say, God, hear our cries like Solomon did. So let's pray. <laughs> that you comfort the hurting, heal the sick. I ask that you uh, be with the Wells family as they're navigating through this tough time with, with their dad and, and uh, the recovery ahead. Father, I uh, pray that you be with their mom as well. God, I ask that you be with the Schrader family as, as Henry, the little accident. I pray, pray that you comfort him, God, in, in a quick recovery. Father, I pray for, for those who don't know you, God, that this morning may be the day where they're sitting in the comfort of their homes and realize that your grace is sufficient, that you're in control that you want to live in us, God. Father, forgive us where we fall short. And because you live, Lord, we can face tomorrow. And that is the grace you have given us. 
for your power it's made perfect in our weakness in the name of jesus that i pray amen amen uh, lewis go ahead God sent his son They call him Jesus He came to love He lived and forgave He lived His grace is sufficient. Amen. Uh, continue reading. Like I said, we're going to walk through Genesis all the way to Revelation today. Um, and uh, if you have your communion, go ahead and, and take that out. And uh, we're going to take that as, as I read this here. Uh, Carmen, thank you for the correction there. Um, the, uh, in Matthew chapter 26, uh, verse 26, 
you know, you, what we're talking about, how, how God's grace it covers us. And, and, and we sing it all the time. We know and we hear. But sometimes it's good to be reminded what that grace looked like. That grace begins with the creation of the world, whereas he, he is in control. And that grace from fulfilling our question of, does he really live with us? And Paul says, yes, he does. He lives inside of us through Jesus Christ. And that grace continue to move on of Paul saying, you're going to have trouble. Things going to happen. Bad things going to happen. Good things going to happen. But God's grace is sufficient in times of chaos and God's grace is sufficient in times of uncertainty, but his power, it's also made perfect in our weakness. And I hope we can, can rely on that grace and that grace continue to the dinner, the dinner where Jesus has set up and it's a last supper. Go ahead and move back a little bit, buddy. Um, the last supper and Jesus said he, he, he took this and then, and this is the ultimate of his grace. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, he says, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and then he gave, after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body. So God took Jesus himself, took the bread at dinner, and he says, this is my body. He's, he's alluding to what is about to happen to him, the ultimate sacrifice. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink from it, from this fruit of the vine, from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So here, here's the promise from, from Jesus from the creation of the world to Solomon's prayer to Paul's command and reminder that his grace is sufficient. And Jesus came and says, what else can I do for you? I am going to tell you the last piece of grace and that grace is my body and that grace is my very blood for the forgiveness of sins. A lot of times we forget we try to fix things ourselves. We try to ask God to fix us. But he says, I forgive you. And that's the ultimate thing we need to understand about God's grace, that he forgiven us. He forgave us. We are his people. He lives in us. Amen. Aaron, can you move back a little bit? <laughs> Aaron was like, oh. <laughs> but let's take communion together. You have it. His body. His blood. Father, help us to understand your grace is sufficient. That forgiveness is the ultimate solution to your grace that we're forgiven, that we're not guilty of our sins, that we, we don't have to worry about on judgment day. We don't have to worry about if we are okay or not. But that meal you promised us, that you have forgiven us, that you love us, that forgiveness is what we need. So this morning, Father, forgive us where we fall short. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen. And continue reading. You know, so we have Genesis, we have First Chronicles, we have Corinthians, well, we have Matthew, we have Corinthians, and now in Revelation. I told you we're going to walk through the Bible today, all from Genesis all the way to Revelation. So at the meal, what we just did with communion, God says, I'm not going to drink this until I drink it again with you in heaven with my father. So turn to Revelation real quick. Is it true? What's happening in Revelation? Revelation chapter four, starting verse one, I'm going to breeze through it and we're going to read it because it's a celebration. 
after this, this is John. He, he's having a vision and he moving through heaven. And he says, after this, I look and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald encircled the throne surrounding the throne with 24 elders or 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold in their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumbling and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. There were seven spirits of God. All in front of the thrones were there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covering with eyes in front of the in front and back. The first living creatures was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and covered with their eyes all around. Even under its wings, day and night, they were never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and has lived forever and ever. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things by your will, they were created and have their pain, their being. Your attention up here, please. I'm going to end with this, okay? So here is a picture of heaven. John is moving through. We all get so distracted by the, the pictures, by the sea of glass and the lightning and the thunder and the 24 elders and the creatures with all eyes, which covers everything, isn't it? The, the creation, the, the the, the thunder, the lightning, the weather, the people, everything, the animals with all the eyes. And we, and we get so lost in those pictures and we're wondering what is going on here. But the true picture that God wants us to understand, it's in Revelation. It all comes together and everything was surrounding the one thing that matters most was the throne. If you read through Revelation chapter four, you realize the living creatures, the elders, the lightning, the sea of glass, the jasper, everything was surrounding the throne and all their eyes were on what? The throne. And that's what Jesus is talking about, that I will reunite with you. I'm going to eat this meal with you in heaven in front of my father and in heaven that reveals through John that everything was surrounding the one thing that matters most, the throne. And that is the grace of God. So as we go through our lives, understand that God is in control, all eyes on Jesus, all eyes on God. In Revelation chapter 4, all eyes surrounding this one throne, looking up into this one magnificent being. And they all said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Because grace, his grace is sufficient. Amen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some heart. And you can take that to the bank. Rely on God's grace today. Lou is going to sing one more song and I'll come back to close this out.
sing to the king amen because he is coming he is coming for sure hey uh, it's so good to see you guys today and and our sons here and, and i want to make one last uh closing statement here uh, as we move through from genesis all the way to revelation that that god is, is in control that god is in control and he deserves our praise and his grace is sufficient and for us, for all of us, that his, his power is made perfect in all weakness. Well, good to see uh, all of you today, and, and, and um, I hope it was a blessing to you as my sons are here as well, the three amigos. Um, I have to go buy a fridge today. My fridge uh, responsibly uh, cranked out on us yesterday. <laughs> so We're putting so, our food in the garage. We're in the garage. In the coolers, in the mini fridge, and and we took the freezer from the church to here. That's right. Since nothing's in there. That's right. Just cold, just <laughs> ice. We we borrow the church deep freezer to put our, our our frozen stuff in there. Since the fridge doesn't work. That's right. You can't really hide anything from your kids because they're just gonna uh, tell everybody. But uh, anyhow. So good to see everybody. We'll see you Wednesday night. Um, and one thing I do ask that you uh, meet with us next Saturday for prayer at the church at 9 a.m. And uh, pray for our church as we navigate uh, through this time. But also um, I'm asking you, uh, we have a prayer request that you uh, pray for our church leaders as we 
plan for Christmas season coming up. And I can't believe we're talking about Christmas already. All right, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And remember, his grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Peace.